Welcome to Viewpoints. My name is Ross Elliott. With me today is Cynthia Renault, commander with the Long Beach Police Department. Cynthia has just finished her master's degree in Homeland Security and has written a thesis. In fact, this is an award-winning thesis, Making Sense in the Edge of Chaos, a framework for effective initial response efforts to large-scale incidents. Welcome, Cynthia. Thank you, Ross. Cindy, if you could tell us, what is the edge of chaos? What's the concept there? The edge of chaos is actually an analogy I borrowed from a molecular biology theory about a cell and how a cell lives and grows or doesn't grow and dies. And molecular biologists say that there is an edge to every cell where agents interact with each other and their environment. And in that edge, the cell will either grow or die based upon the actions that take place in that edge. And within that environment, it's very chaotic as these agents interact with each other and with their environment, hence the name Edge of Chaos. And I liken that in my analogy to what happens when first responders arrive to the scene of a large-scale incident. It is much like that Edge of Chaos on a cell where different agents are interacting with each other and with their environment in, in seeming chaos. So what did you find with, with your research? How did you go about examining the edge of chaos, and, and how did you conduct your research? Well, my research ended up being conducted uh, based upon my own personal experiences, um, things that I've been involved in throughout my 19 years in law enforcement. Um, my uh, first-hand accounts is being incident commander at some large-scale events, along with um, support from literature, from different written reviews of 9-11, of the Oklahoma City bombing, uh, some social science frameworks, sense-making, um, some human resource management theories about high-performing, high-reliability organizations and the behaviors that those employees show in those organizations. Um, there is also a very good book, The Politics of Crisis Management, that I looked at that talks about how the political arena really overlays onto response efforts, and, and that's a fact that, that can't be ignored. And I, I synthesize that into a framework applicable for first responder use as they uh, respond to large-scale incidents, that initial phase of a large-scale incident. So what does this look like? Um, how is the, the policeman on the street going to be able to use this information? Well. In my recommendations, one of the things that I, that I talk about is the need to first educate and train first responders past what NIMS and ICS currently talk about, which I have used very successfully many times. But within NIMS and ICS, I think that there is, is a lack of discussion about that initial phase of a large-scale event that every first responder knows exists. And so what this framework looks like is talking about ways to educate and train first responders through not only classroom, but most importantly, scenario-based application uh, to help them learn different processes and methods to think through a situation, to apply tactics and training thoughtfully and appropriately at a large-scale event to begin to bring order to that chaos. So would it build on smaller pieces? There are training components to this that could be tabletops, perhaps? Tabletops are good. What's better than a tabletop, though, is an actual reality-based scenario. Um, a tabletop is kind of an odd middle ground between just an academic environment in a classroom and actually trying to apply the theory. But in reality-based scenarios, um, and they are difficult to create. I understand that. There's a lot of logistics that go into it. But you have role players who come in who play the parts of victims. Um, you use simunitions uh, that sound much like live fire. Uh, so that, and they do hurt when you get shot with it, by the way. Um, but use as close as possible to real weaponry with role players, with vehicles, with whatever you need to create as close as possible, that chaos, that environment that you will see when you arrive to a large-scale incident. I think that's the best learning tool. Now, how does that experience then benefit the law, law enforcement officer on the street? 
One of the things that I found in my research, um, Carl Wick, who talks about the theories of, of sense making, and he also talks about uh, both he and Gary Klein talk about um, mental slides, this, this creation of, of mental slides. And what that is is that when first responders go to an event that is completely foreign to them, they're, they're looking for something in that event that they've seen before, something that they can latch on to that, that is familiar to them. And if they can find some pieces that are familiar, then they can start fitting those pieces together, applying what they know works for those situations to, to begin to bring some, some order to that chaos. And so that training hopefully creates mental slides in first responders. It's, it creates experiences, um, tactile sensations of being shot with some munitions if you've made a wrong move. Um, the memory of, of the chaos created by role players um, maybe uh, pretending to be wounded or hurt, but certainly yelling, screaming, confusion, all of, those, all of those memories that are created from participating in a reality-based scenario that can then be brought to bear when they're faced with the real thing. Hmm. So the smells, the sounds, their emotions, those then come back to build an experience base for them? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, in thinking about your, your contributions towards improving Homeland Security nationwide, how might this theory be rolled out? Well, I think at the end of the day, my uh, grandiose idea would be that NIMS would be rewritten to add some space in their current, current curriculum to talk about this initial phase of an event, um, to discuss the fact that it will be chaotic, that that chaos is expected and normal, and then help first responders with techniques and tools to work through that chaos, to make sense of that chaos, so that they can then apply the order and structure of NIMS, the, the checklists, the, the position-specific priorities and, and missions that, that then go about managing that incident and helping to restore normalcy. So that, that's kind of my overall goal. Um, ideally, also, I think it would be great to have two training centers, one on the East Coast, one on the West Coast. Bring together the right group of people, a mix of academics, a mix of field practitioners who create a classroom-based lecture to, to talk about all of these things, and then have a, a center where you can take these first responders and put them through some of these reality-based scenarios to have them apply the skills that they've learned and, and really cement those skills in them. Okay, so conceivably then it's not just for Long Beach Police Department. It, it could be regional. Definitely, yes. Terrific. Well, Cindy, um, as I mentioned, this thesis has um, won the award for the best thesis in the graduating class of 0901-0902. And um, you've made quite a contribution to the nation's homeland security with your work. And thank you very much for your contribution and thank you for your time today. Thank you, Ross.